Do you ever wonder why some people seem to have a knack for accumulating wealth while others struggle to make ends meet? I sure did, until I read a book that changed my perspective on wealth building. The book I'm talking about is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. This book isn't just a book, it's a financial education wrapped up in a compelling tale of two fathers. One was the author's own father, a highly educated man, yet financially poor, the poor dad. The other was his best friend's father, a school dropout, yet financially rich, the rich dad. My understanding of money, wealth, and financial freedom took a 180-degree turn after reading this book. You see, I used to think earning a high salary was the key to wealth, but the tale of the two dads taught me otherwise. The poor dad, despite his high income, was always in debt, always struggling. He believed in traditional education and a stable job. He'd say, study hard so you can find a good company to work for. He saw his house as his primary asset, not realizing that it was actually a liability, draining money out of his pocket. On the other hand, the rich dad had a different approach. He understood that financial education is crucial. He'd say, study hard so you can find a good company to buy. He knew the difference between assets and liabilities. He focused on investing in income generating assets like real estate and stocks. His aim was not just to earn, but to keep and grow his wealth. One of the key lessons I learned from this tale is the importance of understanding cash flow. It's not about how much money you earn, it's about how much you keep, how hard it works for you, and how many generations you keep it for. This was a paradigm shift for me. And here's a little nugget for you. Why did the Scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. Just like the rich dad, he knew where to plant his seeds. So, the first lesson I learned was the importance of financial education. It's not about how much money you make, but how much of it you keep, and how many generations you keep it for. After understanding the importance of financial education, I realized that fear and greed often drive our financial decisions. It's like being in a car with two erratic drivers at the wheel. Fear can paralyze you, making you too scared to take risks, to invest, to step outside of your financial comfort zone. It whispers in your ear, what if you lose everything? It's a scary question, isn't it? On the other hand, greed is that reckless driver who doesn't think about the consequences. It lures you with promises of quick riches, tempting you to make hasty decisions. It's like a siren song. Just imagine all the wealth you could have. But as the old saying goes, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. The book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, taught me to take calculated risks and recognize opportunities. It's about balancing on the tightrope of financial decisions, not being swayed too much by fear or greed. It's about understanding that there's no such thing as a sure thing and that every investment comes with a risk. But with knowledge, understanding, and a bit of courage, we can make informed decisions instead of just rolling the dice. Now, let's talk about taxes. Ah, taxes, the inevitable drain on our pockets. They play a significant role in our financial struggles, and more often than not, it's the fear of taxes that pushes us to make rash financial decisions. But here's a funny thought. What if we could turn this fear into a motivator? Imagine using this fear to fuel your quest for financial education and better investment decisions. It's like turning your biggest critic into your biggest fan. The second lesson was about controlling my emotions instead of letting them control me. And remember, the only thing certain in life are death and taxes. Or in this case, the fear of taxes. So, with my fear and greed in check, I turned to the practical side of wealth building, assets, and liabilities. Now, let's delve into the nitty-gritty of what Rich Dad Poor Dad taught me about these two crucial elements. Picture your wealth as a balance scale. On one side you have assets, and on the other, liabilities. Assets are your golden geese, laying those shiny eggs of income. They include investments like real estate, stocks and businesses that, instead of gobbling up your money, put more of it in your pocket. Contrarily, liabilities are like those pesky seagulls at the beach, always swooping down to snatch away your chips. They're the things that drain your income, like a mortgage, credit card debt, or car payments. The book sagely advises building a robust asset column while keeping the liability side as light as possible. This might mean buying real-world assets or investing in income-generating ventures. It's about being smart with your money, 
like a squirrel storing nuts for winter rather than splurging on a shiny new acorn necklace. Now, on to minding your own business. No, this isn't about ignoring your nosy neighbor's latest gossip. It's about focusing on your own financial affairs. This book taught me that minding your business isn't just about managing your career. It's about managing your money. It's about taking control of your financial destiny and not letting it be dictated by the winds of economic change. Here's a little joke for you. Why don't we ever tell secrets on a farm? Because the potatoes have eyes, the corn has ears, and the beans stalk. Just like in farming, in finances, you've got to keep an eye on your assets, listen to the market, and stalk opportunities. The third lesson was about building assets and reducing liabilities. Remember, your house is not an asset if it's eating up your income instead of generating it. Just like a book isn't an asset if it's sitting unread on your shelf. So get out there, build your assets, and mind your business. So those were the key lessons I learned from Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Let's do a quick recap. We discussed the tale of two dads, one rich and one poor, and how their differing perspectives on money management shaped my financial education. We delved into the emotions of fear and greed, and how they can steer our financial decisions. We also touched upon the role of taxes, and how they can impact our financial struggles. Then, we explored the concept of building assets, not liabilities, and the importance of minding our own business, which essentially means focusing on generating income through various investment vehicles like real estate and stocks. We discovered that the key to achieving financial security and building wealth lies in financial intelligence, taking calculated risks, and recognizing opportunities. These lessons have fundamentally changed my approach to financial education and wealth building. They've made me realize that it's not about how much money you make, but how much you keep, how hard it works for you, and how many generations you keep it for. Now here's a thought for you. What if we were all taught these financial lessons in school? We'd probably be spending our money on books instead of avocado toast. Now I'd love to hear from you. Which tip did you find most helpful? Let me know in the comments section. And if you found this video informative, please subscribe to the channel for more such insights. Remember, the journey to financial freedom is a marathon, not a sprint. So buckle up and enjoy the ride.